In late September 2025, the Chinese media released official footage showing flight operations from the Type 003 aircraft carrier, Fujian. The event marked a highly visible milestone in the development of China's carrier-based aviation and attracted global attention for the first confirmed electromagnetic catapult-assisted launches and recovery of the J-15T, J-35, and KJ-600 carrier aircraft. Today, we will examine this development in detail, analyzing the aircraft involved, the Fujian carrier's capabilities, and what this means for China's PLA Navy, and its ongoing transformation into a blue water fighting force. The Type 003 Fujian represents a major milestone in Chinese naval aviation. The country's previous carriers, the Liaoning and the Shandong, are stowbar carriers, which means short takeoff but arrested recovery. What this means is that carrier fighters are launched under their own power, assisted only by a ski jump. Landing or recovery is assisted by arresting wires. In contrast, the Fujian is a cattlebar carrier. That is, it employs catapults for aircraft launches, meaning the aircraft's own engine and fuel do not need to do as much work in getting the plane airborne. Like on the Stobar carriers, recovery on the Fujian is assisted by arresting wires for landings. The Catobar setup enables the operation of a wider range of aircraft, including heavier strike fighters and airborne early warning platforms under a broader range of operational conditions. The recent footage confirms that the Fujian's catapult system is now capable of supporting a wide range of aircraft types. A milestone in both naval flight operations and broader Chinese carrier air wing development. The video released by official and semi-official Chinese sources, including the PLA Navy, supplemented by high-resolution imagery circulated on social media and in Western defense media, depicts the first catapult-assisted operations for three distinct aircraft types. The J-15T heavy fighter, which is basically a vastly upgraded naval flanker, the J-35 stealth fighter, and the KJ-600 airborne early warning aircraft. Each of these represents a critical component of the carrier's air wing, and their simultaneous operation demonstrates the integration of multiple new technologies. From the carrier's electromagnetic catapults and arrestor wires to the deck crew's handling of these advanced aircraft, the J-15T, previously referred to in most open-source reports as the J-15B, is the latest evolution of the original Shenyan J-15, itself a development of the Russian Su-33 naval flanker. What differentiates the J-15T from earlier variants is its full compatibility with catapult launch systems, enabling operations from both catobar and stowbar carriers. Launching from catapults on the Fujian allows the J-15T to launch with heavier payloads of fuel and munitions, unlocking its maximum combat potential, which was previously constrained on ski jump carriers, at least under suboptimal conditions. In addition, the J-15T is equipped with domestically produced WS-10 turbofan engines, replacing the older Russian AL-31F engines. These engines reportedly offer a higher thrust-to-weight ratio, improving performance in both strike and air superiority roles. The J-15T also incorporates significant avionics and sensor upgrades including a modern, active, electronically scanned array radar, a new wide-angle, holographic, heated-up display, and other systems consistent with 4th and 4.5th generation fighters. It retains the large payload capacity typical of these flanker derivatives, 
making us capable of carrying missiles too large for the internal base of stealth aircraft like the J-35 and the land-based J-20. This positions the J-15T as a high payload complement to the carrier's stealth fighters, capable of maximizing the air wing's offensive striking power against surface targets. The J-35, on the other hand, represents China's first fifth-generation carrier-based fighter. The aircraft is the navalized derivative of the J-35A, which in itself is a development of the land-based FC-31 exports design. According to Chinese media, and do feel free to take this with a degree of caution, the J-35 has a radar cross-section smaller than a human palm, which reportedly places it among the world's stealthiest carrier-based aircraft. The design incorporates advanced fuselage shaping and material technologies to reduce radar detectability. Powered by two medium-thrust engines developed in China, the aircraft's maximum takeoff weight approaches 30 tons, which is nearly in the heavy fighter class. Although it must be said the J-35 is a medium fighter, and at least the land-based variant, the J-35A, is probably cheaper than a heavy stealth fighter like the J-20 or the Su-57, in part due to its smaller size. Thanks to the electromagnetic catapult technology on the Fujian, the J-35 can launch fully loaded, giving its extended range, endurance, and weapons payload. Visually, the J-35 differs from the land-based J-35A in several key ways, most notably in its exhaust nozzles, which are lighter in color and may indicate a different power plant, possibly the WS-21, an advanced derivative of the WS-13. Other differences include the adoption of smaller tail rudders on the J-35 and the configuration of non-retractable Lundberg lens, used for radar calibration or signature management during testing. In contrast, the land-based J-35A has generally been seen with retractable Lundberg lens. Naturally, the J-35 has a catapult bar in its nose landing gear and a tail hook for arrested landing, while the J-35A naturally does not. These changes suggest that the naval J-35 has been optimized for carrier operations, taking into account the stresses of catapult launches, arrested landings, and differences in duration of combat operations. The KJ-600 is China's long-awaited fixed-wing carrier-based airborne early warning and control platform, analogous in many respects to the U.S. Navy's E-2D Hawkeye. First flown in mid-2020, the KJ-600 is designed to provide long-range detection, command and control for carrier strike groups. It is equipped with a large rotodome, likely housing an active electronically scanned array radar and has a high wing configuration for stability and deck handling. The aircraft is powered by twin WJ-6C turboprops and features a tail hook and catapult launch bar for carrier operations. Once fully operational, the KJ-600 will serve as the airborne command and control center for the carrier group extending radar coverage, coordinating aircraft, and integrating sensor data from across the fleet. The recent footage released in September confirms that all three aircraft types J-15T, J-35, and KJ-600 have completed initial catapult-assisted takeoffs and arrested landings on the Fujian. While the video likely depicts tests conducted several months ago, its release is consistent with the PLA's historically conservative approach to publicizing operational milestones. By showcasing these accomplishments, China demonstrates 
not only the credibility and the functionality of the Fujian's catapult system, but also the integration of its newest aircraft types, signaling substantial progress toward initial operating capability. Several technical observations can be drawn from the footage. The catapult's launches observed were conducted primarily from the forward port side catapult. Although whether this reflects equipment's qualification states, footage selection, or operational preference is unclear. The flight deck was shown with three KJ-600 aircraft aboard, underscoring the priority given to carrier-based early warning capabilities. In addition, the presence of multiple aircraft types simultaneously highlights the complex choreography required for deck operations and the PLA Navy's growing proficiency in this choreography. The operational implications of these developments are not to be understated. The Fujian's electromagnetic catapult configuration allows heavier and more diverse aircraft to operate from the carrier, extending the range, endurance and weaponry of the air wing. The J-35 provides stealthy, fifth-generation air superiority and strike capabilities. The J-15T can deliver heavier ordnance in both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground roles. The KJ-600, meanwhile, serves as the force multiplier that integrates air, surface, and potentially even land-based operations, acting as the eyes and brain of the carrier formation. Together, these platforms represent the core of what Chinese media describes as the carrier's five-piece suit, encompassing air superiority, strike, reconnaissance, and early warning, electronic warfare, and anti-submarine capabilities if helicopters are brought into the equation. And the Fujian will almost certainly operate the Z-18F anti-submarine helicopters. It is worth noting that, while the Fujian has achieved a huge milestone in carrier aviation, the ship and its air wings are not fully operational in a fully certified sense. Initial flight operations, while demonstrating the functionality of catapults and arresting gear, represents early stage qualification rather than sustained operational deployment. Further testing is required to expand launch envelopes, integrate sortie generation cycles, and validate the full range of combat capabilities under real, practical conditions. The carrier will also need to qualify additional personnel and aircraft before achieving full operational readiness. Nevertheless, these steps mark tangible progress toward establishing a fully capable Catawba carrier air wing. Comparisons to global counterparts provide additional context. The US Navy, which pioneered Catawba operations, continues to operate the most extensive carrier air wing, took decades to achieve similar levels of integration across a vast range of aircraft types. The Fujian, in contrast, is China's first fully catapult-equipped carrier and is now testing both fourth- and fifth-generation fighters alongside its airborne early warning assets. As I hinted on the video thumbnail, the Fujian managed to do something that the US Navy carriers have actually not done up to this point. For what it's worth, the launch of the J-35 from the carrier is the very first time a fifth-generation fighter has been launched specifically by an electromagnetic catapult at sea, anywhere, in any Navy. The US Navy has obviously been launching the F-35C stealth fighter from some of its Nimitz-class carriers for some time now but these launches have been done using steam catapults only, not the EMOS, the US Navy's version of the electromagnetic catapult. The EMOS is of course on the US Navy's Gerald R. Ford class supercarrier, 
but the Gerald Ford is not currently certified to operate the F-35C. This is a little-known fact. Most supercarriers are actually not designed to operate the F-35C, because that requires flight deck modifications for heat resistance, additional maintenance space and facilities, and crew retraining for that to happen. The Gerald Ford is undergoing modification to incorporate the F-35C into its operations, but that is still ongoing and is not expected to finish for some time. The second ship of the Ford class, the John F. Kennedy, may have F-35C integration as soon as it's fully ready. For now, what can be ascertained is that, as far as we know, the Fujian is the first carrier to have launched a fifth-generation stealth fighter using electromagnetic catapults in the form of the J-35. It's possible that the US Navy has tested EMOS using the F-35C in private, away from the public gaze, but that remains purely speculation. The incremental developments of the J-15 and J-35 also reflects China's approach to carrier air wing expansion. The J-15T allows the PLA Navy to operate a fairly capable, high-payload fighter before the J-35 achieves full operational status. The J-15T's compatibility with both Kettlebar and Stobar carriers, including China's two currently operational carriers, also provides flexibility across the existing fleet. They not only provide a boost in combat power to the Fujian, but also a boost in power to the Liaoning and the Shandong as well. Meanwhile, the J-35 introduces fifth-generation stealth and sensor integration capabilities, with a much smaller radar cross-section and a focus on air-to-air -air combat. Similarly, the KJ-600's integration is a crucial development. Fixed-wing airborne early warning aircraft are essential for any air force, whether on land or at sea, offering far greater range and persistence than helicopters or shipborne radars alone. The KJ-600's likely ASAR radar and high-mounted rotodome allows detection of low-altitude threats including sea-skimming missiles, which would be challenging for shipborne systems to find. This increases the carrier formation's situational awareness, effectively multiplying the combat power of both the Fujian and the broader naval task group. China's progress with the Fujian also provides insights into broader strategic trends, by achieving initial full-deck operations and integrating multiple aircraft types, China is demonstrating its capabilities to project power beyond its near seas. While the PLA Navy's carrier aviation is still developing in terms of experience and sheer numbers, these milestones reflect a concerted effort to build a real blue-water naval force.